Here's an introduction to hold-up capacitance, how to calculate it, and when you would want to use it. A hold-up capacitor stores energy in a power delivery system so that if you lose input power, the hold-up capacitor will continue delivering energy to the rest of the system for some specified duration. This could be used to keep a system running uninterrupted when there's a momentary power disruption, such as in aircraft power systems that are running on a nominal 28 volts DC, the system may need to tolerate momentary power interruptions up to 50 milliseconds and continue delivering power to the load from the holdup capacitance. Or if there's a complete power loss, we can detect this and the system can continue running for some amount of time to write important information to a memory card or an E-squared PROM or some other important operation before everything loses power. So on this voltage versus time graph, the voltage on this holdup capacitor, which is delivering power to the load, would sit at a normal operating level, but when input voltage is lost, the voltage on the capacitor will gradually discharge, and while it's doing so, the voltage on the load is going to just stay uninterrupted until the capacitor voltage is so low it can't power the circuit, and then the output finally drops. So this time period here is when any critical operations need to be done, or this is the duration of a momentary input power disruption that must be tolerated. So that's the capacitor holdup time. If this is a momentary interruption, the capacitor voltage will discharge, keeping the load powered. And before this holdup time, power should come back, capacitor should charge up again. The load is just going to see uninterrupted voltage. Looking at equations for the energy stored in a capacitor, energy equals capacitance times voltage squared over 2 and energy in electricity terms is power times time. So from these equations, we end up with a formula where we can calculate either the amount of capacitance to power a certain load for a certain time between a starting and a final voltage level, or if we know the capacitor value, we can calculate how long that size capacitor will power this load between those voltage thresholds. I'm going to try a test circuit powered from a 3 volt power supply. I have a few capacitors that I'm going to measure the value of and then put them in circuit and determine the hold up time I can get out of them. I'm using a boost converter that claims to need at least 2 volts in to regulate the output. So I'm running between 3 volts nominal down to 2 volts when power is lost. And I have an LED as a load. It's an integrated package with a resistor built in, so it runs on 5 volts and it draws 14.75 milliamps. So the DC to DC converter will give 5 volts out until there's not enough voltage here to power the regulator and we lose our output. Normally we have 3 volts in. At some point, power will be lost. The capacitor will start discharging and until it gets down to 2 volts, we are still going to have 5 volts out and this is the holdup time between 3 volts being lost and capacitor voltage going down to 2 volts. With a known capacitor, how long can I power this LED at this load? This is the main input voltage to the boost converter driving this light. So starting at 3 volts, the output of this boost converter draws 14.77 milliamps to turn on the light. As I lower the input voltage down toward 2 volts, the boost converter's output current stays fixed at 14.77. At 2.5 volts in, the light is still drawing the same 14.78 milliamps. If I lower it all the way down to 2, still drawing 14.77 milliamps on the output of the converter to drive this light. And the voltage on the output of the converter is fixed at 5 volts. So if I bring the input back up to 3, now I'll move the ammeter. I'm going to measure the current on the input to the boost converter. Now the ammeter is showing 28 milliamps at 3 volts in to power this 5 volt light at 14.77 milliamps. 
So now if I go down to 2.5 volts in, it takes about 34 milliamps. And if I lower to 2 volts, it takes about 42.7 milliamps. So on average, the input power at these varying voltages and currents is 85 milliwatts, and the output power for 5 volts at 14.75 milliamps is about 74 milliwatts, so the efficiency power out over power in is about 87%. Using my two specific capacitors, now I can calculate the holdup time knowing that the holdup capacitors need to deliver 85 milliwatts average into the boost converter to continue powering the LED and knowing that the capacitor will have to do this while the voltage falls from 3 volts to 2 volts. Plugging these values into the formula and solving for time, I should be able to keep powering my load for about 135 milliseconds. Here's the circuit with electrolytics added to the input of the boost converter. Now I can cut the power to the input and check what happens on the output as the capacitors take over to power the boost converter and the light eventually goes off, we can now see what's going on. So the yellow channel 1 trace is the 5 volt output for the light. The blue channel 2 trace is the input power rail. So the input rail was 3 volts at the top. Then when I pulled the plug and capacitors took over, they started discharging. And while they were still able to provide enough input voltage to keep the boost converter running, we still had 5 volts out until the input got so low, below 2 volts, it could not keep the output on and 5 volts sharply dropped. Since I want some margin here and I'm allowing the input to drop from 3 volts down to 2 volts at this cursor before we decide, okay, there's not enough power anymore, that's the amount of time I want to measure. So 50 milliseconds per division, depending exactly where I decide this started dropping, because there is a little ripple here as well, and looking at a cursor on a scope at exactly 2.00 volts, give or take, let's just say this looks to me like 140 milliseconds. So this means if our input supply disappears for less than 140 milliseconds and then it can come back, we should have a solid output 5 volt supply at the power we calculated we need to deliver. So I'm going to try to quickly remove power and give it back and just observe. So here I momentarily took away input power and while still driving the output light I was able to keep 5 volts all the while. And counting the time here that was cutting it close. That was almost 140 or so milliseconds. So here I took away power a little longer, so somewhere after 140 milliseconds here, the output was no longer held up, dropped out, and when I applied input voltage again, everything resumed. Here I did a couple in a row, so it looks like just around 100 milliseconds twice in a row I dropped out the power, and the output rail is held up. I was just taking out this power jumper, so I can simulate power loss conditions like this. That's the basics of what a holdup capacitor does and how to calculate what value you need for a given load. This can be useful even in hobby level projects. I'll be looking at using holdup capacitance in some of my own projects coming up soon. If you'd like to see how I put this to use in upcoming projects, consider subscribing and you can be notified when future videos come out. Thanks for watching.